Well, at the end of season seven, the keener students will remember, um, House basically goes off the deep end and he loses it entirely and crashes his car uh, through the front of his uh, Cuddy's living room, um, dining room. They're in the living room, he hits the dining room. So nobody dies, but they only don't die by the skin of their teeth. And as a result of that, House flees in the first instance. And as, as a result of that, uh, we rejoin season eight with House having served time, uh, not surprisingly, for whatever the charge would be, reckless endangerment or, or criminal damage. And, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and he served a fair number of months. So this is where I am now, is the institution where uh, House has been uh, making his dwelling for the last uh, six, six months or so. Um, and uh, it's a lesson, children, stay out of jail. It's, it's actually quite like an English public school, but uh, it is very, very real. Um, it's, uh, these are tiny, tiny cells, and they were built, I think, for two people, and apparently they had four, sometimes more, uh, by the time it closed. Um, so if, you're, if you have a problem with small spaces, um, this is not for you. Um, I would advise against that career in shoplifting, if you were considering it. House is not above, well he's not above, he's not above much actually. Uh, he's, not, he's certainly not above feelings of rage and bitterness and jealousy and all those, you know, the, the less attractive end of the human spectrum uh, is very much alive in him. He's not, uh, although I see a sort of nobility in this character, I would never pretend for a minute that he behaves nobly all the time. He certainly doesn't. And this is... Uh, this was him, this was a case of him lashing out, out of hurt. Um, he is uh, in genuine pain. It's the, maybe the only time in his life when he's, he's opened himself to another human being, found a kind of happiness and a kind of contentment, and uh, it is taken away from him. And uh, he just doesn't have, for all his mighty intellect, he just doesn't have the, the emotional resources to, to deal with it. So he, he, uh, he throws a very big tantrum, a uh, very big house-wrecking tantrum. Well, House has been here six months, and w the, the, he, where we are now is really um, sort of a medium security prison. This is not... Uh, this is not um, as hardcore as it gets, but at the same time, this is not an open prison by any means. There is a, a definite physical regimen of restraint, but, um, you know, he's not at, in with uh, the hardest of the hard. And I think in that situation, House has been able to survive by his wits. Um, and I think a certain amount of uh, respect has been given to him. He, he's essentially been able to sell his medical expertise. Everybody has to have something that they can sell in order to survive, I suppose. Um, and uh, he's been able to sell his medical expertise to, to get by. Um, and, uh, you know, I, and I think in, in some ways House is a, is a survivor. I think I, I could imagine him doing okay. When physically tested, I could imagine him doing okay. This, this is a rough old place, and House does get knocked around a bit. Um, uh, the, yes, this would, um, well, this would test anybody, but, I, but yes, House, but, but, but in typical House fashion, he, some of that, um, some of that damage uh, is of his own making. He's a man who cannot, apparently, stay out of trouble for very long. He has a self-destructive streak in him, but also rather a noble streak that will cause him to risk his own safety and his own well-being for the sake, if not of other people, at least of getting the answer, of getting at the truth. House, is, uh, House feels guilt. He doesn't necessarily react to guilt in the way that most of us do, but he does feel it. He is aware of it. He, he, uh, uh, he's capable of torturing himself in uh, some very ingenious ways. Uh, and I do think he regrets uh, many, many things about his life. And I think um, 
reg regressing, losing Cuddy um, in such a hideously violent and destructive way, I think, will always is always going to haunt him. Dr. Adams um, is uh, a very charming young doctor who works in the prison clinic. Now played by Odette Annabelle. I say now played by her as if we've had other people playing before. We haven't. Played now and for all time by Odette Annabelle. Um, and she becomes a sort of... Uh, um, a confederate of houses. He he he, um, he he manages to enjoin her um, to his cause um, of solving this problem, but she she at the same time, of course, has a is in a position of power over him. She is not an inmate. She is a she is a visiting physician, and so she is able to also. Um, uh, deputize him to, to work for her. So they have a sort of strange alliance between the two of them to get this problem solved. And they have a similar, uh, a similar hunger for the answer, for the puzzle. Um, she is here, I think, because she feels it is, uh, it is her way of, of giving, um, that, that to, um, you know, being a good doctor doesn't necessarily mean working on the Upper West Side or working in Beverly Hills. You know, one has to uh, one has to reach out to the the poor and disadvantaged and, and and heal and help wherever one can. But at the same time, you know, here she's dealing with uh, some drug addiction problems and lancing a few boils. You know, there isn't anything that really um, um, gets her intellectual curiosity going until until house engages it and so the two of them set off on this on this hunt together um, and I hope I believe and hope that they make um, uh, an interesting and likable couple I, I, I think they like each other although they don't necessarily know it yet but I think they do what a house identifies in her in her eyes, because as you know, a house can look into someone's soul, as I am doing now. No, I'm not, because it's the lunch hour. I don't look into souls in the lunch hour. Um, but uh, yes, he sees in, in uh, Dr. Adams, he sees a, a kind of unease and a discontent, a restlessness that she, this is not really satisfying her. She has a hunger for more to, to test herself uh, further and he, he house identifies that and, and exploits it frankly Odette is absolutely delightful absolutely delightful she's been uh, I mean she's only been here a couple of days uh, has already completed her first her work on the first show um, I did give her a nickname I thought well she I gave her a nickname because she came back for the second week I thought I'm not gonna bother with nicknames if she's calling her agent over the weekend saying I can't work with this guy get me out of here but as she came back for the second week, I thought, well, she's probably worth investing in a nickname. Uh, I don't know if I should tell you what it is, though. That seems, I'm making public something that, let me think about that. I'll come back to you on that. I mean, it's not that it's, uh, it's, not, that it's uh, not suitable for broadcast. It is. I would say, though, that uh, Odette said that she would uh, come up with a nickname for me, but, but she doesn't know that that's not allowed. She used to call me Mr. Laurie and only Mr. Laurie uh, now and for all time. Th that's just the way it works. I don't, I don't make the rules. No, wait a minute. No, I do make the rules. I, what I mean is, well, she'll learn. Some, I'll have someone explain it to you. Yeah. yeah. It, is a, it is a desperately sad thing for me and for everyone on the house, obviously, not to have Lisa here. She's an unbelievably, she's a stunning actress. And incredibly good company as well um, so it, it is a great you know it, we will miss her very very much indeed um, but at the same time we we wish her well and it's it's unsurprisingly she was snapped up within minutes by the Green Bay Packers I think uh, took her uh, so and we wish her well you know and that's great because she is so astonishingly good. I have long maintained that, that uh, Lisa Edelstein does the, does the work of, of you know, three or four actresses, that she is able to combine so many. She can be the, 
you know, the funny one and the dramatic one and the powerful one and the, the, the sexy one. And she can do all these things. She has all these uh, um, cards in her hand. And uh, we, we, we will miss her, uh, but we wish her well. But as you would expect, now that she's not in the show, we're not just going to shoot empty spaces where she would have been standing or have pauses where she would have been speaking. We are going to try and tell stories as best we can. Um, and who knows, maybe, uh, um, maybe we will find solutions to things or we will find different ways of telling stories that might not have occurred to us otherwise if we'd just gone on with the same a group of people. So I don't know, I don't know. But it's, it's, it, what's done is done and we wish her well. I am releasing a record. I'm laying it at the feet of the American public for them to thumbs up or thumbs down. I don't know. I have no idea how it will go. It is a, it's a record of, um, it's, it's New Orleans music, essentially. It's a sort of New Orleans blues has always been my first love. Um, and this is a, a declaration of that love. And, and which is really, ex the, the title of the album is Let Them Talk, which is the title of a James Booker song, um, which we do on the album, but also it expresses a sort of, uh, it's, it's a wonderful song about an unrepentant, defiant love for a person, but in my case, for this music. Um, and uh, to hell with what anyone thinks. This is what I love and this is who uh, I am, I suppose. This, is, this music is what I, this is how I feel. Um, and I, it was a, a thrilling, thrilling experience terrifying i won't deny uh, and we actually toured with it we released it in europe and we we had a mini tour we did about uh, eight shows which doesn't sound like very much but if you if you've done no shows to go from no shows to eight shows is a lot you know um and that was uh, thrilling really really thrilling it is something i've always wanted to do but never considered doing because i and it just, I suppose it just wasn't the right time or I didn't have the confidence. Or, and, and to tell you the truth, I still don't have the confidence. But a man came to me from a, from a reputable record company. I believe they're reputable. Uh, I asked around. Um, and he said, do you want to do a record? And my first instinct was to say, no, well, I'm not qualified. I don't have the chops for it. I'm not. And then I thought, well, this may not come my way again and we only pass through this world once, and I don't want to be looking back saying, you know, I could have done a record. I want to say, I did a record, and whether you like it or not, I did it, and it exists. And uh, so I, I, uh, I took the leap, and I'm, I'm so delighted that I did. I'm not, I'm not saying the audience will be delighted. Listeners may not feel so delighted. Uh, that remains to be seen, but, but I um, had an amazing experience with amazing musicians uh, I'm, I'm overusing the word amazing, but when I say uh, Tom Jones and Dr. John and Irma Thomas and Alan Toussaint, I think you will agree the word amazing is justified. Uh, I was incredibly lucky to be in their company and I, I hope some of their, um, their sort of magic dust has, has rubbed off. I, it's something I'm incredibly proud of and uh, can't wait to do it again, to be honest, if they'll let me.